Chapter 1. No idea is too crazy if you are determined to succeed. We all have dreams, goals we wish to see come to fruition, and while some plans are possible, others might seem a bit outlandish. But as we are about to see, Phil Knight proves that you can achieve any dream as long as you are driven and determined. In 1962, Phil Knight, like any other business person, had an idea, a grand one, and had one option, to just do it. He was faced with many hurdles even before he got going. His vision seemed crazy and impossible, and he didn't even have the funds to go on a trip, let alone start a multi-billion dollar company. The bigger the dream, the more significant the hurdles that you will encounter along the way. But as we shall find out in the following chapters, Phil Knight was incredibly persistent in pursuing his dream. In his days, the sports shoe business giants were two German companies, Adidas and Puma, two feuding brothers entrenched in a war of outdoing the other. Their sheer reach and financial might didn't serve as a deterrent, but only went on to inspire him to carve out a niche for himself. Phil Knight was fresh out of Stanford, and he had one more lap to finish before he chased his dreams. He intended to take a trip to the cities steeped in history and spiritual relevance, from Hawaii, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Rangoon, Calcutta, Bombay, Saigon, Kathmandu, Cairo, Istanbul, Athens, Jordan, Jerusalem, Nairobi, Rome, Paris, Vienna, West Berlin, East Berlin, Munich, and London. But really, only one stood out of the rest, Japan. You can gain a lot of insight by experiencing various other cultures other than your own. Japan was home to the company he had theorized would be perfect for breaking the monopoly Adidas had on the market at the time. Japan's Anasuka Company produced running shoes known as Tigers. Their products were just as good as Adidas, but cheaper. And Phil Knight wrote a paper suggesting that based on the successful Japanese displacement of German camera companies, it was also possible to apply this to the running shoe industry. He was poised to be the emissary for this paradigm shift. Chapter 2. Distractions are commonplace, but you can and must move past them to achieve your dreams. Phil Knight needed money for a trip. He sold his car, and when it wasn't enough, his father was there to help with the remaining sum. He then chose his classmate from Stanford, Carter, to accompany him on his voyage because he was a kindred spirit. They took off for their first location, Hawaii, and for a bit, Phil Knight lost sight of his dream. Maybe the beauty and comfort, or it could be the fact that perhaps he too started to believe that his goal was too wild to be done. But Phil Knight decided to stay in Hawaii longer. He even got a job that he hated, so he didn't have to face the looming race to Japan. But soon, Phil Knight came to his senses and had to leave Carter behind. He took a flight to Japan where he met with two ex-GIs, who had started running an import shop in Japan after the war. They gave him the needed information and guidance to tackle the uncertain waters of the Japanese business world. An American in Japan was the best example for out of your element. To top it all off, Japan had lost a war to the U.S., so it was quite a sensitive situation for young Phil. What right did he have to convince the Japanese to do business with the enemy? Another crazy idea he could feel his father's brow raise in Oregon. It is essential always to remember what path you are on and to recenter yourself back on track. But despite the history between two nations and the grave reminders of the crimes of his home nation around him, he soldiered through a seven-hour train ride to the location of Anasuka Company, Kobe. Even though he suffered a setback when he mistook the venue for his presentation, he got back on track. To his surprise and relief, the executives were forward-thinking and willing to do business for the sake of business. The head of export, Mr. Miyazaki, started the questioning. He wanted to know what company Phil Knight was with or represented. Like books, sports give people a sense of having lived other lives, of taking part in other people's victories and defeats. When sports are at their best, the fan's spirit merges with the heart of the athlete, Phil Knight. Chapter 3. You can fashion stepping stones from the stumbling blocks you might face. In the previous chapter, Phil Knight embarked on a brave, life-changing trip to a land mired in war and memories to snatch himself a shot at glory. The road wasn't without hitches, derailments, and distractions, but he thrived and got his reward. In business and life, you'll face a lot of reasons to quit, to settle for the easiest way out. We will learn in this chapter that this is never the best option. Regardless of the challenges we will encounter, it is advisable not to take the easy way out. After his tour around the world in 1963, Phil Knight returned to his family in Oregon, who were pleased to see him after a year away. He wasted no time to share his stories and triumphs with them, and they were always on hand to offer whatever support they could. Now all that remained was for his shipment of shoes to arrive. They were taking their precious time, and Knight was feeling discouraged. Maybe he had wasted time going to Japan. This delay made Knight wonder if he had made a mistake and made him question his dream. This realization made Phil Knight once again desperate for meaning, for a purpose. Maybe his dream wasn't so valid after all, and perhaps he was the best settling for a job suited for him. Phil Knight caved and applied for a job at an accounting firm, Librand, Ross Brothers, and Montgomery. The pay was reasonable, $500 a month, and he was finally able to get a new car. But yet yeah, something was missing. He didn't feel whole at this convenient job, and neither will you if you substitute your dream for a convenient way out. Taking a suitable path is that you relegate your goal to the background and keep you from living a fulfilled life. The easy way out will only provide temporary release, but your vision will haunt you. It is important to remember, though, that you can use a convenient break to regroup and get back on track to accomplishing your dream. Chapter 4. Management style is an important element of business success. 
We've seen Phil Knight overcome great adversities and come out on top somehow. This chapter will look at the various threats he faced regarding his business continuity and how he triumphed. Often, when success stories get told, it is essential to mention the struggles and hurdles faced before achieving success. It readies the mind of a dreamer for the hard work that awaits them. Because a dream is not enough, you must want to bring it to fruition through dedication and diligent work. It is not enough to dream. It is also important to strive to keep the dream alive. Phil Knight hired his first employee, Jeff Johnson, a fellow Stanford runner. Johnson took the business in a newer, bolder, and more productive direction. He sold more, got the word out to the West's far reaches and even beyond, to the East. Johnson was running ever faster, with his unparalleled enthusiasm, but he lacked one key thing, his boss's feedback. Johnson was fond of giving reports and reviews from each month, week, and even daily in letters he wrote to Phil Knight. Phil Knight's style of management was loose, and he didn't afford the time for feedback. This tactic did better than bad. The outrage Johnson felt would, in turn, spur him to do even more in hopes that Phil Knight would take notice. Surviving a hurdle is no indication you'll not face another. You must be ready for anything. Things were great otherwise. Sales were great, and business with Anitsuka was healthy until Phil Knight received a letter from a coach from Manhasset, ordering him to stop selling Tigers, as he was the company's only distributor according to his contract. This news greatly saddened Phil Knight. He felt once again duped by his Japanese partners, and decided to go back to where it all started to fix things and get some answers since the letters he wrote to Anisuka didn't yield any responses. Phil Knight knew that he had to take control of the situation, and the best way to do so was to go to the root of the problem. Did you know, the Nike logo came before the name. Phil Knight lobbied to call the company Dimension 6, while others favored Bengal. Employee Jeff Johnson preferred Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. Phil Knight didn't like it, but manufacturing deadlines forced him to come to a quick decision. Chapter 5. Staying strong in the face of stern opposition will offer fresh rewards. Once more, Phil Knight encountered another impossible setback, and for a bit, he almost quit selling shoes altogether. It is important to remember that to stop because of a hurdle is to kill your dreams prematurely and you owe it to yourself and no one else to fulfill them. Phil Knight was back in Japan after just two months of running his business to save it from extinction. It turned out that the head of export, Mr. Miyazaki, had been replaced and that the new one, Mr. Morimoto, had overseen a new business deal that was now threatening Blue Ribbon Sports Company. The mark of successful ventures is their decision to stay focused and dedicated in challenging circumstances. Phil Knight had a new task now, to win over this new head of export and plead his case adequately, hopefully the same way he had in his first visit. This time, though, he got to meet with the founder of the company, Mr. Onisuka himself, who shared a similar enthusiasm to a young Phil Knight about dreams and persevering to see it through. This fact made it easier to land his pitch, so much so that without even saying a word, Mr. Onitsuka was sold and handed over Knight's Blue Ribbon's rights to trade in all the Western states for a one-year pending review. Trials test our metal to see if we can handle the weight of the success that awaits us. Phil Knight had achieved another remarkable feat because he refused to lay down in the face of stiff opposition. This advice is the advice to many, and if success is what you desire, you must never back down from a fight. Your dream is worth the effort. You just need to see this truth for yourself. Knight decided in his heart early that he had only one option, and that was fulfilling this dream of his, creating a legacy for himself and inspiring others who dream but are afraid to do it. Knight's life is an excellent example for young people everywhere. If you take away the entrepreneurship, the business acumen, you'd still have a man with stern determination. Chapter 6. An Opportunity Can Masquerade Itself as a Teachable Moment in 1977, when scientists Frank Rudy and Bob Bogert pitched the first idea of filling souls with air to Phil Knight, he felt they had to be joking. Why to put air in shoes, he asked. They responded as they had responded to other questions like this from people like him, people like Adidas, for greater cushioning, for greater support, for the ride of your life. Although Phil Knight's motivation was competition with Adidas, it is essential to note that he took the idea and ran with it. He strapped on a pair of the samples they had brought and gone on a run in them, and thus the idea of air in soles wasn't just an idea anymore. It would be Nike's cash cow. It is okay to have healthy competition fuel our need to succeed. It keeps us sharp and hungry. Phil Knight had a keen eye for opportunities, and it set him apart from the competition. Phil had seen a chance to expand his business to other parts of the world. Knight cited factories in Korea, Puerto Rico, Exeter, or New England, and China, where he broke ground in 1980 as the first American to do that kind of business in 25 years. When it came to stars to endorse, he knew just the players that would get the word out quickly and get a better response. He took a chance on a newcomer, LeBron James, and it paid big time. Along with other sports superstars that have worn the Nike swoosh over the years, Romanian tennis player Ili Nastase in 1972, record-breaking American runner Steve Prefontaine in 1973, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, and Tiger Woods. You can take risks that seem outlandish in your business. Follow your gut. It's usually right. Today, Nike continues to blaze the trail in the field of sportswear. There was a time when they only sold shoes, yet the market was teeming with sports apparel made by the competition. Phil Knight was no longer content with just being a shoe company. He needed the world to take him seriously, so he decided to venture into a Nike clothing line, which met with great success in 1978. 
Conclusion. From the sleepy town of Oregon, Phil Knight nursed a dream like any other aspiring business hero. He had a plan to challenge the firms that already left their marks in the sports shoe and equipment business. His primary aspiration and later greatest rival was Adidas. The market was so saturated with their products that even Olympic athletes wore their shoes. Phil Knight wanted that same influence. He wanted to create a brand that would infiltrate the markets deeper and inspire the wearers with its culture and the sense of pride it'll generate. The sheer fact that Phil Knight had a dream wasn't enough to accomplish it. For him, nothing seemed feasible at the beginning of his journey, and some called his goal crazy, but he believed in himself and his dream. He had the support of his family and his coworkers, who also became like family to him. The lesson is to always stick to our dreams and stay focused and dedicated, even in the face of stern opposition or seductive distractions. Phil Knight lived by this rule and enjoyed the success that comes with it. His story is an example of the triumph of the dreamer, a tale of how hard it will get and the rewards of sticking with your dreams no matter what. It reminds us that we too, with our various goals and objectives, can achieve whatever we put our minds to. Try this. Even in the face of challenges and trials, you must stay focused and determined. Write out your goals and paste them in places where you can easily see them. This will remind you of your commitments whenever you feel like quitting.